Hi there, everybody. My name is Kate, and welcome to my channel, Trinergy Awakens Naturally. So let's talk about the traveling creep show. <laughs> um, I had a dream last night, and I wanted to um, give you the dream interpretation because it's, yep, I look a little windblown. I am. <laughs> Yeah, I tried to get it kind of stuffed up in there. It's just the best I could do and get this out before I forgot it. So <laughs> bear with me. Um, so um, I wanted to relate this to you because it's definitely going on for other people. It's going on across the planet. You know, it's a global experience that we're all going through um, with the solar eclipse that just happened and the lunar eclipse that happened before that and um, a full moon, a, a super moon, I believe that one was. And we're coming up on the, um, the next new moon in another week or so. So it's a timeless message. However, it's not going to stop, you know, these uncomfortable feelings that we're having or some of the creepies or some of the delight, I mean, whatever they are. Um, and they, they're probably wobbling all over the place for quite a number of people. And if they are, that's to be expected. We're in the middle of Mercury retrograde also. However, it really doesn't matter what day of the week it is as pertains to the astrological calendar or cosmic um, stuff that's happening because if we're feeling weird we're feeling weird and um, this is just to offer you a different perspective perhaps but I do not often dream, fortunately. <laughs> I was plagued with super duper awful nightmares for years. I mean, years and years and years um, that were just horrible. And when I, you know, went through my transformation, you know, started my transformation, that's a never ending story. Um, back about five years ago there were bouts of having some pretty awful stuff because i was separating from some awful stuff and so there was an opportunity to be in school all day long thinking about it and at night that you're not going to get out of this you're going to deal with this and lose the fright on it um, and we're going to show you how and so now i'm very blessed because for probably three or four years at least um i really just don't have nightmares i don't have nightmares at all however what i do have are opportunities that I wake up and go Ew. You know, I feel like I've been dumped uh, or dunked in molasses or something or, you know, like the tar baby or something that this just really, it feels uncomfortable. What is this? Because it's not my baseline to be feeling creepy like this. And that was something that um, up until five years ago, I had the creeps constantly. I would feel creepy anywhere that I just felt uncomfortable. And I always thought, of course, it was me, you know, and it was me. It was my body responding to this just creepy energy. I don't like it. And I just wasn't understanding that. So now fast forward, here we are. I understand that a whole lot better. And so the, the dreams that come, that creepy feeling that comes, that's definitely, if I get it in 3D that I feel uncomfortable or creepy, that's definitely a, mm -mm, you know, stop what you're doing. That's the immediate. My body has already probably given me messages. If I'm feeling creepy, um, I probably missed a few steps already that my body was starting to feel, you know, some pangs or some twitches or something that I overlooked. And so I, I pay very close attention to my environment and as to my body as pertains to the environment. But if I get taken by, you know, a sudden creepy feeling, Feeling or an onslaught of that, then I definitely stop what I'm doing and reassess the situation immediately and usually, you know, get myself out of there wherever I am, whatever I'm doing. Um, it just depends on the situation, but I, I'm not going to stick around in that creepy feeling to figure out what my intuition was trying to tell me before I 333 succumb to it blindly. <laughs> so play very strategically. However, I woke up, you know, um, last night I woke up several times, had a bunch of dreams recently in the last two days, and I thought, this is funny because thank goodness I don't have nightmares anymore and thank goodness I don't have dreams you know regularly because it really sticks in my mind when I do have a dream I remember that I had one and quite often I don't have to remember it it's it's something that I already understand it as I'm coming out of it thank goodness you know that's just the way that my team and I have worked and that really works for me because you know it keeps me out of having to spend a whole lot of time trying to wonder what the symbology was. We worked through it a lot in the dream, you know, et cetera. No matter what anybody else is doing, that's just the way that it works for me. I'm not saying that, you know, other people's practices don't work or shouldn't work or couldn't work or whatever. No, I'm not. I'm just saying that that's just a, a blessing of ways that dreams have come to me and why, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to have it be that way because when I was having nightmares constantly, there was no dream journal I was going to keep. It was just going to keep traumatizing me. And so when they pulled back, you know, and I just 
just no longer have them, it's easier for me to work with dreams that happen once every six months or once, you know, a month for a couple of months. Then I have the, the wherewithal, the brain space and the, the courage to be dealing with that stuff, both in the dream as well as outside of the dream. So anyway, here we are and that the last two days specifically, um, I had some just really weird dreams that I woke up, as I said, feeling like, ew, you know, I, I just, I really don't like this 505 experience. Um, but it, it wouldn't be allowed to be brought in. I wouldn't be brought to this place unless there was a reason. So let's get busy with why do I even remember this and what was it about? What do I need to know? Um, give me everything that I need to have on this so that I can be working through this and and go forward with what you know how can i upgrade to get out of this crappy feeling because i definitely don't want to stay here you know i can be thinking about this analyzing it however i don't want to be analyzing at the level like i'm still there you know I, I i don't want that so how can i get out of that and get that third party objective thing and say ha uh, what's the thing on this what's what's the the um the assessment of this, what's the, the working knowledge of this that's for me to see. And the way that I do that is to wake up from the dream and realize it was a dream and then ask my team immediately of please allow me to pull back from the emotionality of it. Let me pull back from being hooked into that level of the energetic exchange that was going on. If it didn't resolve and I'm still thinking about it when I woke up, there's a good chance that I need to be thinking about it a little bit more. However, I don't need to be feeling the same way about it. And so I I asked for that very specifically and what ended up happening yesterday's dream was so creepy because um, it's people that I just I don't talk to them anymore I don't have anything to do with them they did creep me out in person and you know when I was separating away from them they creeped me out even more when they showed me just how dark and nasty they were willing to go um, when they weren't getting their way quite frankly you know not to throw shade it's just that's the way that was is that no I didn't know that and now that I know that you know I can't unring that bell and I can't unsmell that smell and I gotta go you know and, and get myself right Right out of here because it doesn't serve me and it doesn't serve anybody else for me to stay there you know fighting or fussing with people who just really that's what they want to be doing and it was harming me and so I don't want to do that energetically on any level in a dream in person and on any level and so when I was having this dream last night there were two separate buildings and it was like um, the movie Inception came up um, um, for me the other day to watch it and I did and so in between that day a um, couple of days before the eclipse when I watched that movie there's a whole lot of um, it's it's in dream states levels of dream states and there's one where when the dream um, is being torn down um, there are other people brought into one person's dream state and when that person that's it's their dream when that person is starting to wake up or they're starting to realize that their dream has been infiltrated the dream starts to deteriorate and all the architecture that was built by other people perhaps um, that were infiltrating the dream it starts to break down and all this stuff and yet the characters when everybody knows that's what's going on you know the two characters in the the part of the movie that i'm talking about they both know that this is the dream state it's my dream and you're the guest here you know however it's breaking down because my subconscious knows that you're here um even though we're in a dream and we're talking and we know this is real you know my subconscious doesn't know you and, and views you as a um as offensive and starts to break down this whole dream state and so they're there being very calm while everything is exploding everywhere around them um it's just absolutely exploding everywhere things are falling apart they're literally blowing up they're on fire that you know things are flying off in in wild directions and physics doesn't apply anymore i mean the only thing that does apply is that these two are unbothered by it and the only way that they wake up unless they get to the end of the time limit the only way that they wake up is if they are unalive and so that's what I want to remember about this dream from last night was that I was looking at it, um, or excuse me, two nights ago, where um, <laughs> we were, uh, it was somebody that I knew from my past and had a very intimate and long-term relationship with um, and had very, you know, deep connection with, very, very emotionally connected and knew a lot about me, a lot of vulnerable states of being with this person and likewise. So um, it was very bizarre because that person was there along with everybody else that you know I just don't talk to anymore and things were just kind of like falling apart around us and I'm going is this person in my dream or am I in theirs apparently they're in mine because I'm starting to really see that do you not understand that this is all falling apart this is not real this is absolutely exploding around us you don't get this and there were two separate buildings 
they were absolutely two separate buildings and in one building is where this whole charade was going on charade was going on with a party and like all this celebration but it was very dark very dank and very smelly had a very moldy and musty dusty crusty smell to it that just it was unpleasant and i thought i don't talk to you you know anymore it's really weird that i'd be here at some very strange I don't know what this is, party, a celebration of some kind, and it's dark. Every floor is dark like it's a basement, no matter where you go in this building, like a hotel, kind of, or an apartment building or something, but they were just open floors, like warehouses or something, and it's everywhere we go in this, and yet we're on one floor where there's a, a swimming pool, you know, and it's all dark and mood lighting that was really creepy mood lighting, and I'm like, I just feel really creepy with you and this whole thing, and do you not see that this is exploding everywhere around us? There's, you know, just stuff happening, and I was like, I gotta go. I've gotta, you know, hit that other building because I know I need, I've got work I need to do in this other building, and before I went, that we were looking out of big, huge plate glass buildings. Um, and I live in Colorado Springs, so the front range is right, you know, in front of my face quite a bit. Um, this wasn't the front range that I saw. However, that was a representation of a mountain range right there that we could see out of these big, huge windows, right out of a, a big, high, tall building of some kind. Um, we were all looking at it and the sky brightened up immediately and I knew, oh, that's eclipse um, energy. This is the eclipse, eleven eleven. thank you. And yet I'm looking at it, we're all looking at it. Nobody's got their glasses on and we, there was no moon. I was just thinking this is the eclipse. However, there was no moon. So I'm thinking, okay, this is really weird. And then all of a sudden there were coronal mass ejections, plasma bursts and stuff. Um, sun burps is what I call them that were coming off the sun that there was, the sun was there and the, the um, outside of it was dark. It was really strange, like the inverse of the eclipse, right? Um, where the sun was absolutely seen and yet a dark rim around the outer portion of the sun. And I could see all of these licks coming off of the, the sun and they were just burst like huge. They're thousands of miles, you know, um, long and wide and, you know, huge, huge, huge coronal mass, mass ejections. And I looked and I said, oh my God, you're not supposed to be able to see those with the naked eye. You're not supposed to be able to see those with the naked eye. And people were telling me that this was the eclipse. That's what was to be expected. I mean, they were saying all this stuff like, you have no idea what you're doing. I'm like, this is not what this is. 12, 12 said, oh my God, you know, the sun is that that's not normal this is not normal i have to go i have to get over to the other building i have to get to my kids i gotta get out of here um and the people around me were just all like they were drinking at this time you know it was all light out now because the sun is like raining down you know hellfire essentially with these big sunbursts that we can visually see from the sun <laughs> like oh you have no idea what you're looking at that's not you know no 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 that's not what you think it is and i thought i don't have time anymore i, I don't care what your deal is i don't care what you're doing i don't care who you are who you ever were i gotta go because i know my kids are in the other building and they have no idea perhaps because they're not over here um and what finally happened Happened that just you know made me break through this whole crowd of you know dodos that are all going wow you know and going yeah that's really cool <laughs> you know just being so ignorant not understanding the danger of you know no that's not what this is you know um oh my god the sun started arcing these things down and these licks of huge flames went and touched the front range front the the front of this mountain not the front range where i live but the front range of the mountain range that i was looking at and set them on fire now presumably these mountains were miles and miles and miles away from where we were however i thought oh my goodness yeah this is if you were believing in that revelation thing in end times i'd go ahead and settle all of nothing i'd just go ahead and sit it down you know and go ahead party do whatever you do but i gotta go because i got kids to talk to see ya um you know i don't know what one does whenever they know the end of the world is coming but this isn't it i gotta go you know <laughs> So I ran across the street, which was ironic, right? That of all the people in my life, you know, that I separated from, um, the only two people that I cared about is I just want to talk to my children and let them know so that they can make decisions about what they want to do. You know, they need to know this. They need to be informed because these other people, they don't want to be informed. They don't, they don't care, you know, let me get out over there. And so I ran across the street to this other building and it stopped in the middle between them. And I said, oh my God, you know, I'm succumbing to this whole end of the world thing and yet, hold on a second, what do I believe? Do I believe that all things are working for our good? 
do I believe that the sun is raining down hellfire and that God's angry and punishing and my, you know, all of that stuff that, you know, there's a party going on over there. If I just wanted to be oblivious, I could go over there. Um, but I could also stand here and say, what is this? It's obviously not, you know, party time. We need to pay attention that mountain range is on fire at a minimum and it came from the sun that just set it on fire. So I'm going to pay attention here. And what I was getting was, you're feeling the fear of big shifts happening, big stuff happening. The sun's pretty powerful and it did indeed set those mountains on fire. However, the mountains are on board with that. They understand what's going on here and you don't need to know. Just keep on going with where you were going and what you were doing and what your um, priority is right now, which isn't to be afraid of whatever is happening right now because people that are afraid over there that you care about what they're doing, you might want to go and help them figure it out because they're going to be figuring it out pretty soon um, when hysteria breaks loose eventually when people figure out that this isn't what you think it might be and so I went over to um, that uh, next building over and it was some sort of a housing structure also where they lived and both of my children were um, there's nine years between my children and so um, in real life and so there's you know a significant age difference and they were young <laughs> they were only <clears throat> maybe you know six or so and 11 is that right yes yeah, 6 and 11 ish something like that so they were young which represented to me the innocence you know that i i want to help those that are innocent i want to help you know those that might need some understanding on this i want to inform them and they're my children you know i i, I want to let them know and i want to be with them in case they're afraid you know these people don't care they're over there partying drinking smoking you know speedballing whatever they're doing you know okay uh, fine let me not get in your way but please get out of my way because i have other places to go and when I went and knocked on the door, you know, like was banging on it and trying to figure out how I could break in, um, they opened the door and they're like, Mom, you know, oh my God, what's happening? And I said, get your stuff. We have to go to wherever it is that we were going. I have no idea where that was. No clue. Um, we didn't have a bunker in the woods somewhere that I was aware of. I have no idea where we were going. I just knew that we needed to be together and I needed to get them to the safe zone wherever that was. And I said, just come now. And they said, but wait, what about school tomorrow? And I said, oh, <laughs> okay. You've been hanging out across the street a little bit too much. You got to come with me. There is no school tomorrow. I can guarantee you there's no school tomorrow. And if there is, I'll write a note or something, but let's go now. Now. And as soon as I could get some sense of authority over the situation with myself and what my priorities were, and that if I believe in spirit, I believe in God, I believe in, you know, the natural world is kind and loving and Gaia and, you know, Ascension 5D and all of these beautiful things, then I have to believe that the mountains are on fire for a reason and that it's not to punish me or anyone else specifically it said this is a transformation and it we will be punished if we stand slow in the midst of this and so we got to go now you know that anybody that wants to go with me i'm leading the caravan and if it's just the caravan and me okay so let it be i'm on my way out of here you know and yet let me go and get my children and grab them and give them the opportunity and so we started hauling and that was the last and i woke up woke up with that and realized that it really is about that, that at this point when we're in major transformations, you know, and energy upgrades that are so freaky, there are people who don't have any idea what's going on. They're just absolutely blind and, you know, drinking, drugging, doing whatever they're doing, you know, having very dark, very strange little parties over there. Yeah, doing all kinds of stuff, you know, that are not my priority um, any day for the most part. And they definitely aren't for the last things I want to be doing, you know, possibly before the end of the world. I mean, if I was going to interpret it that way, um, before the end of the energy upgrades, that, that's how I'd like to interpret it and how I think I will is that before I miss the opportunity to use that to grow my courage and my faith and also help those that are younger that are less experienced who might be experiencing fear that need a leader to get them out of here. You know, those people didn't need a leader because they didn't want one and there was no leader so I got to be one. Oh, okay, well, how do I do that? Well, go get your priorities um, straight and go handle up with the people that you know you can help and so the broader message is that be the leader that you don't see because there's a lot of people who aren't leading very well um it, not everybody that's leading is actually a leader um they're people who are running in fear and, t and spreading a whole lot of strange theories and yet when push comes to shove and we have some sort of an emergency or some need 
for the leadership to be very calm, balanced, and able to lead very authoritatively and with confidence, uh, you're seeing that break apart. People start weaseling around and they turn into what they really are, which is somebody that was getting away with a whole lot of facade and a whole lot of stuff, you know, on a charade that really wasn't real. And so be the leader that you don't see, then give me the, the power to know and understand that the mountains are on fire it's going to be here and I have to get, you know, what's important to me, what's valuable to me, who's important to me and who's in, who's valuable to me, the what, not so much, but the who is, then I have to get them the opportunity at least. I couldn't drag them out. I couldn't make them come. Um, however, also wasn't going to give them any chance to go pack their bags and, you know, all that other stuff. Nope, we have to go now. We're not having school tomorrow and I'll take care of it. You just let's go. If you want to go, we have to go right now. And that's what they opted to do. So that's what I'm encouraging you if this re resonates with you if it's relevant to you for some reason or somehow I'm really glad to know that that it's time to really grow our courage in those places and be leaders of our own lives and in our own agency and our own authority to know our own energy well enough that you know when we feel afraid there's nothing wrong with feeling fear fear is a very good indicator of I gotta get out of here or I gotta stay and play with this and make it go away or something I mean we need to know what the fear is addressing what is the fear related to and how can I um, take care of it in the most appropriate way, which isn't to stay over there and play stupid. You know, I'm not going to be over there in the middle of whatever kind of freak off that was. You know, I, I'm not interested, thanks anyway, or in the dark in the basement, you know, and suddenly seeing the light, but still not seeing it right or having any appreciation for the enormity of what was happening. Those people had no idea because they were so far gone, you know, in whatever they were on that they weren't understanding, appreciating, or having any respect for the fact that nature has just told you the sun has just told you that there's something really huge happening here and i'm certainly as a human being i'm not going to be taken with any kind of sense of you know uh, leadership or authority or any ability to tell anybody if they're not getting the idea from seeing the sun set mountains on fire millions of miles away then i gotta go i can't stop here slow and you know hope and pray that one day, no i i have to go and give those um vulnerable young um energies the opportunity to at least find you know a sense of comfort even if it was the end of the world you know and i don't know what's happening and i didn't fully however i just knew that it's not going to get better by me falling into the fear of it, it will make me lose my mind and make me completely useless to anyone that I could be helping to calm down and surrender to this process because surrendering to the process means we have to move through the fear. Um, and if I can help them, then that's what is most important to me and that's where I want to be with it. And so the way that I do that isn't to stay over there ignoring it or having no respect whatsoever for what was really going on or being so stoned or cack cracked out, coked out, you know, dope out whatever or dark or you know disrespectful sacrilegious whatever any of that stuff was can't be over there if I really want to make sure that I have the best chances of being able to surrender um, to the fear long enough to say okay I surrender to the fact that I am terrified by this can you please give me some information on this and oh yeah that's right I just needed to be reminded thank you spirit that yeah this is stuff I've never seen before and it's really you know got me by the tail for a minute however I have to really know that you're here and you are cool and things started clearing up in that dream almost immediately um, and like I said I was able to reach my children and out of all the people I've ever known, you know, my children are always the ones that, you know, I want to see and I want to hear from and I want to know are safe and that I would go for first um, out of anybody because that's just the way it kind of is, you know, in my world that mother, that's what they do. Um, however... It's not to say that every mother plays that way. That's just my own personal priority. So I'm not putting a, you know, a thought on it one way or another. If that's the way it should be or it has to be or, you know, that's just the way that it is for me. And so anyway, the other dream, I'll tell you right quickly, was another very dark and it was just a gross, you know, place that's a scenario. It's the same energetic field every time and it's a scenario that um, sets itself up pretty much the same every time. It has some differences, but it's the same place generically and it's just a dark place and people that I, I don't talk to you and we have a zero relationship I don't even speak to you and I'm not uh, I'm not sad about that I'm okay with that that no and if we keep coming back here in the dream state 
And that was one that really bothered me because I'm like, you know, I don't appreciate these 5D things, you know, these astral things. I don't like them when I'm awake. I don't like them when I'm asleep. I don't like them because we're coming in on the same freak. If we were coming in, you know, if there was a meeting of a higher frequency and we were having a different conversation, that would be okay. However, that's not what's happening. What is it that you want? Why are you here? Um, and interestingly enough, <laughs> A presidential candidate was in this dream and a man that I do not like. I have zero respect for other than as a human being, I wouldn't, you know, um, kick him or anything. I just, uh, 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 no, I don't want him to be president at all. Um, got a lot of issues with misogyny and racism and all kinds of cultural wars and just homophobic, uh, xenophobic, all kinds of phobic stuff that I just, I, I don't have respect for that because, you know, not in a leader, it's dangerous. So this person was in the dream and I was so upset in this dream. I hadn't fully realized what I was doing, why I was there, and what I needed to be doing to get myself out of there. Yet, I was still playing along in this dream a little bit, kind of, hmm, confused, being confused, and um, someone that I had this intimate relationship, same same person, coming in the same frequency as the other dream, that, why do you have me here? What 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 is this? Why did you invite me? It was another party. Why did you invite me to this? This is not my style, and I'm not going with that one. That's not, I don't even know why I'd be here supporting this. If that's what this is I'm definitely out of here because I don't support this this is not what I do you know absolutely not I don't like you and I don't like who you support you know so thanks anyway no and this political candidate came by this presidential candidate came by with all the Secret Service all the hullabaloo and people just look at his shoes and you know blah, 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 you know just so much of that idolatry that I don't dig you know it, there's too much ego involved in that and ego is the you know the maniac of the world it's what has destroyed the earth in so many ways um and it's what destroys people is not having a balanced you know ego and dealing with the fact that you know it's okay that we're humble it's okay if we don't win it's okay because that's the old paradigm and it's no longer relevant it's okay if you get that any time you know it's all right if you pull into line and get to the paradigm shift of hey we're into the age of aquarius now we're the ego it's really not necessary you can retire that thing however we're here and there's people just you know fawning over this person and he looked at me me and and said something I have no idea what it was um, but something probably suggesting of hey you love me right or something creepy like that probably and the person beside me who in fact does support that um, or at least did the last time I talked to him said you know oh yeah look don't you aren't you so happy to see him aren't you I mean really goading me and pushing me and you know bullying me almost but very kindly you know sounded really nice and pushy to well go over and say hi to him and I'm like no absolutely not I'm not interested I've got to go you know and no thank you and for whatever reason that it happened I was a little bit embarrassed <laughs> <laughs> in my dream that I did it because it's not my style to you know be that openly hostile to someone um, but as he was going by the this presidential candidate was you know saying hey you love me right you love me and it was Tari was right at me because I wasn't playing along he noticed it out of the, all the people that were there you know on the sidelines um, that I wasn't doing that and he said you love me right you love me and I put up both my middle fingers gave him the two finger salute and said no dude I do not I do not support you and I asked Absolutely, just you know waved him off with the mm -mm, nope that's what I think of you that is what I think of you and not backing down off of that for one second no please go away and if you don't I gotta go no matter what you do and it was so odd it was an upside down thing like stranger stranger things um, it was upside down world so hard that this presidential candidate looked at me and said, well, look at her. She's just look at she's giving me so much love. And that is that what that means that that finger thing means that you just love me so much. And I thought, yeah, there's no hope here. There's absolutely no hope here that I can bring. The only hope I can bring is getting myself out of here before I, you know, absolutely lose my mind with this or get trapped here in this dark and dank place that smells bad. And there's nothing here that's for me that looks good or feels good or is good for me. I don't support it. I don't have to do anything to it. I didn't have to, you know, give it the finger. That was not my general, you know, operative style out here in 3D to just flip somebody off anymore. They're 
you know, I have in the past, of course. Um, however, I try to stay out of being gauche, you know, like that. Um, and, you know, use my mouth in a better way instead of my fingers with gesturing, you know, a sign language that could be considered quite offensive because it is. Um, I don't know why I opted for it, but I was glad that I did in getting the point across, I suppose. Um, I'm not sure how else I would have gotten my point across. I'm not sure why I felt like I needed to get my point across. I have no idea. I just know that there's a lot of very creepy stuff. The creep show is um, really coming in hard and fast for a lot of people and it's not likely to slow down if we're not dealing with it when it shows up. It's going to come back and so any chance and any opportunity that we have to use our own faculties and our own mind all the time you know in a dream out here in 3d and lucid dreaming in whatever state of being we're in it's a little more difficult sometimes in the dream state however i found that i never did any concentrated work to become better in my dream state at doing anything i got better out here in 3d of putting my foot down and saying no this is the boundary of you have to go or i'm going whatever one it was this is stopping now and absolutely not you know and i found that my dream started reflecting that more um, but especially you know now when we have people that are astral traveling all over the place and you know their mouths are opening up and saying things their fingers are on keyboards doing things and typing things and making stuff happen and we're executing maneuvers all over the place <laughs> you know people are really they're pressed and you know they're stressed and they're really scrapping and straggling or scrapping hard um, and scraping hard to really find something that they can grab grab a hold of to still keep their position, not realizing that that whole thing that you're, you know, clinging to, the whole thing is going down. And so really that's what's most important is not to get drawn into the, um, the clownery and the buffoonery of believing that I need to do something to that. So, um, and neither do you. So I hope that that's been helpful to you in some way. And I hope you enjoy your day, no matter what part of the day you're in. And remember, get within your skin because you're divine. It's absolutely beautiful. It's absolutely fine. And if you've got, you know, a a traveling creep show around you get to your divine get to that place inside of you that's so pure um so beautiful and so filled with joy love light all that stuff that sounds so hokey and you know full of shit and stuff like that it really isn't it's that the, we're transitioning and it can be really hard to remember that or find that or believe that however it really takes just the discipline of being willing to try to believe that to even move in that direction that the more we keep drawing our attention back to yeah that mountain's on fire oh no yeah that I know that there's always a reason and it's working for my good no matter how I feel about this uh, there's always a reason that it's working for my good. It doesn't, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The more I pay attention to that, I'm not paying attention to that. So let me put it here. It's far more beneficial for me to remember this so that I can get myself up out of the toilet, out of that creepy feeling, out of that fear, out of that, you know, densest energy field so that I can make the really great decisions that will move me forward. No matter how it comes out, it's still going to be better. I might fall down and, you know, break my, my fingers and my nose or, you know, something on the way out. However, it's going to still be far better to have a broken nose and a few broken fingers than it is to be consumed by, you know, whatever stampede is happening back there because I wasn't paying attention. So as I said, get within your skin and enjoy your day, but you're divine. It is absolutely fine. Take care of your beautiful selves and I'll see you again next time. Goodbye, my friends.